straight up. Keep him going. Step up. Watching Bill Thomas at work with his sons on his upstate New York spread conjures up images of a bygone era. Thomas isn't a farmer by training. He's a Harvard-educated physician. Still, he says driving his draft horses across his fields is one way he stays in touch with the rhythms of life. Thomas also strives for that feeling in his day job, caring for elderly and disabled patients in nursing homes. You sleeping okay? Well, that's a blessing right there. Thomas, who's 42 and a geriatrician by training, has been caring for patients like this one for more than a decade. His experiences have turned him into one of the nation's most outspoken nursing home reformers. What you're seeing right now is the end of the American nursing home. It is finished. And the big question that really be, ought to be on the lips of the politicians and the leaders and the academics is, what comes next? Across the country, the nursing home industry is in a state of near crisis. It's been pressured by everything from a shortage of workers to low government payments for patient care. In many states, a number of homes have gone bankrupt or have closed. Bill Thomas says the biggest problem is that nursing homes are anathema to most people. A hospital and a poorhouse got together, and they had a baby. And the baby was a nursing home. And, you know, it's a little bit like it's mama and a little bit like it's papa. And at its deepest heart, it's an institution. And that is just not any way to live a life. Images of life in many of America's roughly 17,000 nursing homes are hauntingly familiar. There's the grim ambiance of bare floors and of nearly incapacitated patients doubled up in crowded rooms. There's also the centralized food service and meals delivered at irregular hours on plastic trays. And in the worst cases, often captured by hidden TV cameras, there's neglect and abuse of residents by nursing home staff. A congressional report released last July said state inspectors had cited nearly one in ten nursing homes in the country for instances of serious abuse. We found examples of residents being punched, choked, or kicked by staff members or, or other residents. These attacks frequently cause serious injuries such as, such as fractured bones and lacerations. A new poll by the NewsHour, the Kaiser Family Foundation, and the Harvard School of Public Health shows the public is concerned. Almost half of all Americans think people are worse off after going into nursing homes than before they went in. And more than four in ten would find it, quote, totally unacceptable to move into a nursing home themselves. A smaller group of Americans who've had a friend or family member in a nursing home whom they visited regularly reported experiences that were just slightly better. Six in 10 said they were satisfied with the care that that person received. Almost four in 10 were dissatisfied. What's more, one in four reported that the nursing home resident they knew had been badly treated or abused by the staff. These realities and perceptions have inspired Bill Thomas to make nursing homes more congenial for the 1.6 million Americans who live in them. He's devised one approach that he calls the Eden Alternative. Eden was the world we were supposed to inhabit. And here we are taking care of our elders and we have an opportunity to make an environment for them the way it ought to be. A model is St. Luke's home in Utica, New York, part of the Faxton St. Luke's healthcare system. It's one of roughly 240 nursing homes across the country that have adopted the Eden approach and display its official seal. Standard features of Edenized homes include ubiquitous plants, on-site daycare centers for the children of nursing home workers, and various animals scurrying or roosting about. You know, I never held a baby like you in my hand before. Gina, huh? that's kiwi. Baby? Kiwi. Okay, we. We poured in plants and animals and children <laughs> with giant salt shakers, you know, uh, spiced it up um, with hundreds of birds and, and dogs and cats and children and plants and gardens so that the environment itself felt more alive, looked 
more alive, sounded more alive. I don't care who's right or wrong. St. Luke's was also made more appetizing in other respects, says Bruce Gendron, a senior officer of Faxton St. Luke's who oversees the home. He says one of the first things to go was centralized food service. What we've tried to do here is create a pantry adjacent to the dining room. We bring the food down in bulk and then the food is served on plates, family style, directly into the dining room. We bake bread every day before mealtime in, in a bread machine, uh, which allows the scent of the baking bread to kind of get out through the dining room and into the halls, which stimulates the appetite of our residents. And then we also have our soup in a crock pot, which is also right out in the dining room they can serve directly from. Does it cost more to do it this way? It is more expensive. It's a little bit more labor intensive to do this this way. Um, but we see the value that we get back from the, uh, from the appetites of the residents and, and the ambience uh, is certainly worth the effort. Thomas says one other strategy lies at the heart of the Eden alternative empowering both the people cared for and their caregivers. I oversee 24-7 on the unit, 365 days a year. You usually play every day. I know you do. Valerie Turner is a manager and so-called team leader in a St. Luke's unit for 40 residents. She explains that St. Luke's employees are organized into teams and cross-trained so they can focus as a group on a particular resident and perform a variety of functions if needed. What we try to, try to do here is um, we do consistency where our aides have the people on a consistent basis so that they get used to that person. Residents are also encouraged to take an active role in the nursing home's operations. That's designed to stave off what Thomas says can be a devastating slide into passivity and helplessness. Take Lori Heil, a 28-year-old with end-stage kidney disease who spent the past five years in nursing homes. She's been appointed a member of St. Luke's in-house animal care committee. I keep track of the food. What if nobody checked that? They would go hungry. Mm. They go dry too without any water. Many of Thomas's peers in the nursing home industry are impressed. Dr. Charles Rodman is president and CEO of the American Healthcare Association. That's a trade group representing roughly 12,000 of the nation's nursing homes and other long-term care facilities. Bill's a dreamer. Uh, he dreams about, I think, the right answer about how we take care for our uh, elderly and our, and our young. Uh, I agree with his dream. He sees the evolution of, uh, of the Eden alternative, testing the things that work, uh, testing the things that don't work, and, and modifying. I think it's a, a, a very uh, reasonable approach. Rodman says Thomas's biggest contribution may be opening the door to more variety in long-term care. Quite frankly, everybody doesn't want uh, necessarily to have birds or, or, uh, or dogs or, uh, or a responsibility for, for plants. And so the, the real issue is choice. And, and, and so I see everybody trying to, uh, to innovate. In fact, Thomas is now contemplating even more radical approaches to long-term care based on a transforming experience in his own life. Seven years ago, Thomas and his wife, Judy, discovered that their then newborn daughter, Haley, had a rare neurologic condition, diagnosed as Odahara syndrome. Later, a second daughter, Hannah, was also born with a condition. The kids who have it have terrible, terrible seizures uh, that are really hard to control. And their brains don't grow as quickly or as fully as other children. And they tend to have trouble with their vision. And in fact, Haley and Hannah are both blind um, as a result of this. Things like speaking or talking or walking or sitting up or holding your head up, these are things they're not going to be able to do. The two girls, now ages seven and five, require 24 hour a day care in the Thomas's home. We live uh, long term care here with 10 nurses and rotating staff and trying to deal with all the meds and the insurance issues. And I'm basically the administrator of a small long-term care facility. I think that being a parent of a child with a disability is joining a club nobody wants to join, you know. And, um, but, and there's a lot of pain and suffering that comes with that. But um, if, you, if you open yourself up to it, you can learn a lot of things too. Next sister. Haley and Hannah are in some ways our elders. They've already gone where Jude and I are going to go. If we live long enough, 
we will be just like Haley and Hannah. And just because they might be frail as many of our, as many of our elders become um, does not mean that they have to have a life that's any less or any different than the rest of us. We don't care for our, our girls with a housekeeping department and a nursing department and everybody participates to get the girls what they need. That's the way we ought to organize care. And that conclusion has led Thomas to his newest idea. He calls them greenhouses. Architectural renderings show freestanding facilities for just six elderly or disabled persons who'd live together in as home-like a setting as possible. Residents would be cared for by a sharply higher ratio of nurses and aides than is generally the case in the nursing home industry. Thomas and Bruce Gendron now want to close down an aging nursing home nearby and transfer its roughly 125 patients into 20 planned greenhouses. As we've said to New York State, we'll build them for less than it would take to build a new facility. We'll take the reimbursement that you're giving us now uh, to care for the elders, and we're going to reorganize the services. Jeez, that includes equipping the greenhouses with up-to-date technology. We're going to be connecting elders to their family members through email and video conferencing. We're going to create a smart house that, that, that lets elders turn lights on and off uh, through voice command rather than having to ask someone to come and do it for them. These are all ideas, says Thomas, that flow from the lessons taught by Haley, Hannah, and the elders he's cared for. In long-term care, love matters. And the, the heart of the problem is institutions can't love. When we rethink our institutionalism, mass institutionalization of elders, when we do these things, we're not just making a better life for the elderly. We're making life better for everybody in every part of society. And, says Thomas, shaping a future more like Eden than what we face now.